On December 21st, 1988, the world's largest and most powerful transport plane, the AN-225 Maria, which was made by the Antonov Serial Production Plant, flew its first flight. By March the next year, with a maximum carrying capacity of over 500 tons, it had set 106 world records and records for planes in its class. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today, we'll talk about how this giant was made, how it died, and how it may be reborn. So the plane was made to transport components for the Energia rocket carrier and for the Buran space vessel. But by the time the first AN-225 was finished, all the necessary trips were done by the BMT Atlant plane. The AN-225 only participated in the Buran program by transporting the Buran to the Paris Air and Space Expo and demonstrated several test flights at Baikonur. After the fall of the Soviet Union and the Energia Buran program was closed, the only active AN-225 was placed in a hangar and its engines were removed to be used on the AN-124 planes. In 1989, a holding company was founded that would provide heavy cargo transport called Antonov Airlines. It was located in Kyiv and operated from London Luton Airport in a partnership with Airfoil Heavy Lift. The company began operations with a fleet of four AN-124-100s and three AN-12s. But by the late 1990s, it became clear there was a demand for a plane larger than the AN-124. Considering this demand, the unused AN-225 was rebuilt, modified to transport heavy cargo, and made operational again under the ownership of Antonov Airlines. The Maria's first commercial flight was on January 31st, 2002, from Stuttgart to Thumrate Oman, with a load of 187 and a half tons of food for American soldiers in the country. After that, the AN-225 joined the ranks of the Ruslan as a workhorse for Antonov Airlines, thanks to its ability to transport items that had previously been impossible for air transport, like locomotives, 150-ton generators, and more. The ability to quickly transport large cargo necessary for the aftermath of natural disasters gave the plane a reputation as a valued aid for humanitarian operations. Beginning in July 2003, the AN-225 and the AN-124s transported over 800 tons of equipment on humanitarian missions to Iraq. The AN-225 was also attractive to the U.S. government to transport military equipment to the Middle East to support the U.N. forces. In August 2009, the Maria was put into the Guinness Book of World Records for transporting the largest single cargo load in the history of aviation at 187.6 tons. It was a generator weighing 174 tons that was transported along with a special frame from Frankfurt to Yerevan for a new Armenian power station. The plane's crew was given a certificate that said they were put into the Guinness Book of World Records. It's worth noting that there were developments at the time to use the plane as a platform to launch spacecraft from. One such project was the MAX Air and Space System. It was a two-step air start system that should have been composed of the AN-225 carrier that would carry an orbital plane or cargo container. According to calculations, it would have substantially lowered the cost of transporting cargo to orbit. At the very beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion into Ukraine, an air attack by the Russians on the Hostomilk airport near Kyiv destroyed the flagship of Ukraine's air force, the legendary AN-225 Maria. It was undergoing an engine swap, so it was not able to evacuate like other planes. It was announced that restoring the largest plane in the world would cost about $3 billion and take a long time. In late June, Ukraine was visited by British billionaire and founder of the company Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson. His goal in visiting Ukraine 
was an aim to see if he could create a business in partnership with the private and public sectors to support Ukraine more effectively. He met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and described his experience in the war-torn area as humbling and emotional. Branson visited the Antonov airport with the remains of Maria. The Ukrainian officials accompanying him told him they plan to build a new plane that will set many records after this war. Also, the modernized Maria will have modern digital equipment. According to parliament member David Arkami, the British billionaire expressed the desire to help everyone he could. Branson was also pleasantly shocked by the Ukrainians' optimism and that even in these difficult times, they still dream of breakthroughs in airplane building. Additionally, during his visit to Hostomel, he was interested in the possibility to restore the Antonov airfield. The AN-225 Maria spent 20,000 hours in the air. In its 45 years of use, this middle bird flew hundreds of humanitarian missions. It could have been used until at least 2033. The pilot that flew it called the plane dead, like a person, not destroyed. He remembers how he walked up to it and gingerly said hello, and how the crew always rubbed it. There is a partially built second AN-225 in the Antonov hangars. In 2020, Igor Fomenko announced a second model of the Maria could be finished if it was fully designed. The second Maria was built alongside the first one. However, after the Soviet Union collapsed, it was only about 70% finished and was put in storage and has been there for about 30 years, just standing without wings, engines, a chassis, or tail unit. This is the base that is planned to be used in restoring the Maria. If financing the project is more or less solved, there are still problems with the inside of the plane. The work required to finish it is extremely extensive. Pieces to be made include the chassis, the onboard electronics, the hydraulics, the navigation system, six engines, and much more. As far as rebuilding the plane goes, it's very complicated. It was built in the USSR, and those technologies, cooperation, and experienced specialists that would be needed at every step of building such a unique design are gone. Antonov had the chance to get an investor in 2018. He had spoken with the Chinese company Airspace Industry Corporation of China about modernizing and finishing the second AN-225. The Chinese were ready to finance the project and get the plane, and planned on a joint serial production of AN-225s in China in the second step licensed by Antonov. However, this agreement did not come to fruition. If there's enough timely financing, building the plane will take several years. Of course, you must understand, it isn't a commercial project. It's more than that, it's a symbol of Ukraine's victory and a symbol of the world defeating evil. The Maria's last flight was part of a parade for Ukraine's Independence Day on August 24th, 2021. The plane flew over Kreshetik, just 1,200 feet in the air. According to the planned route, the plane flew from the airbase in Hostomel to the skies over Kyiv in the Teremkov district. After its celebratory flight over Kreshetik, the Maria flew over the Post Plaza metro region, then through Dnieper and the Trikhonov Island. Then, video of the amazing AN-225 Maria's landing near the Hostomel airport appeared online. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe either. Comment, let me know. Do you think they should rebuild this plane or not? And stick around. We have much more to come.